This is part two of my trip to Cancun in Mexico and I'm actually really pleased with some of these photos. I went and found flamingos, coates, spider monkeys. But anyway, I'll chat to you at the end of the video. Roll the video. Today I am in an urban park in Cancun and you can see buildings, nature, but there is an incredible abundance of coates, which are like the Latin American raccoon. I've probably seen about 40. I've seen these species a few times in the rainforest, but these guys are incredibly tame. There's one right next to me who's been following me. I don't know what he's eating. When I arrived to the edge of this park, I thought I was in the wrong location. The park was in the middle of the city centre, with apartments and shops around it. But just before I was about to give up and leave, I saw a local throw out vegetable and food waste, and suddenly about 40 coates appeared. They were perfect photo subjects. They are adorable and quite good at looking at the camera. Unlike raccoons, coates are diurnal and typically female groups with young have 10 to 30 individuals. The youngsters are very social, whilst the males seem to sit in the trees and watch everyone. Every time I sat down to get eye level shots, I was approached by a coati. I was amazed at how tame and curious they were. But apparently, since the city has become more developed and urbanized, they're moving out of the parks and into the streets, which could host a variety of issues as they try to find food. But after all the fun, they were relaxing deeper into the park near these mangroves. The following day, I headed to Akumal to snorkel with turtles, but I soon got distracted by these pelicans. Like a lot of wildlife in the Cancun area, they're familiar with people and so I was able to get some close portraits of these funky looking birds. Realising how comfortable they were, I decided to get right in front of them. The pelican that was resting looked straight down the lens, providing a great expression. But then I realised why they were waiting on the beach. The fishermen arrived and chucked the leftover chum into the sea. Then it was time to find some turtles, and it wasn't difficult at all. These are green turtles, and they are feeding on the vegetation on the seabed.
The sucker fish you see catching a ride are remoras, and they have a symbiotic relationship with the turtles. They clean the turtle's shell, and the turtles provide protection. At first, I was quite nervous swimming with these turtles. I've never been much of a fan of swimming in the sea, especially deep water. But I was nervous of accidentally kicking a turtle. But I got better at just floating and watching these incredible animals. Akumal is an amazing place for watching turtles. But to avoid the very expensive turtle tours, go to the hotel, ask for a drink, and then you have free access to the beach. Today I'm back in the jungle and today's mission is to find and photograph spider monkeys. I've already seen one, it was a young male travelling and I've seen three howler monkeys but I'm hoping to find a fruiting tree that has a family or a subgroup of spider monkeys feeding on fruit but the forest is super dry and I've only found one fruiting tree. So not sure this is the right area for spider monkeys. When I studied zoology at university, I spent three months living in the rainforest studying spider monkeys. And so I got pretty confident at locating spider monkeys. But today I was struggling. Then finally, once I had spotted one, more spider monkeys appeared from the trees. And an alarm call warns the group that I've spotted them. Spider monkeys are incredible. They have a prehensile tail that works as a fifth limb and can hold their entire body weight. They eat fruit and move large distances to find fruiting trees. I wasn't getting a clear view of them and they were taking me deeper and deeper into the forest. This was a group of three adult females and a juvenile male who finally stopped to look at me. 
and then the female stopped and I realised why they didn't want me to spot them. They were protecting a tiny, tiny baby. But they moved on and I couldn't follow. Then I heard movement in the trees and had the most incredible moment with these two male spider monkeys. Then it was time for these two spider monkeys to move on. They took their last fruit and disappeared into the forest. Okay, that was so cool. Those two spider monkeys were young males and they were completely unbothered by me. I got so close and they didn't even have a good look at me. They weren't interested at all. They were just happily eating these small green fruits and I walked under them. They didn't move. And that's a really magical experience you can have with nature when animals just trust your presence and they know you're not gonna harm them. And these males didn't even chuck sticks at me or anything so they didn't even make any alarm calls or noises but yeah incredible to see spider monkeys so close again if you remember in part one i was unsuccessful in photographing the flamingos but today was the day in a quick rush to get to the flamingos for sunset, we got into a boat and headed to the salt lagoon. But on the way we stopped off to meet some black eagles. As we got closer, we started to see the flamingos flying in the sky. Okay. 
As the boatman jumped into the water, he pushed us slowly and quietly closer to the flamingos. I then decided to jump into the water and soon got stuck in the thick, salty mud. This is my first time seeing flamingos. They are completely bizarre and beautiful. This was my last trip in Mexico. After spending six months here, it will definitely be a country I remember. And I'm sure I will be back. I was very lucky to be invited to stay at one of my patron's father's new ranch in Mexico and when I first spoke to Sergio I thought it was going to be a room in the jungle with fertilant snakes and scorpions everywhere and it turned out to be a stunning little place. There was a swimming pool, a communal kitchen, a gym, a basketball court. The room I stayed in had aircon, which was heavenly, a little kitchen and an ensuite shower room. Sergio's aim is to rent out the property to long stay travellers. So if you're interested in living in Mexico for several months, then you can drop Sergio an email. His email is in the description. I loved Mexico. It was an amazing country and I'm sure I'll be back because there's so much wildlife I still want to see. But before I go, JJ, JJ, are you gonna help? No, okay. Uh, I want to tell you about my 2022 calendars and my Christmas cards. I've restocked both on my website and I'm up to date with shipping. A dog, another dog is joining. Um, so if you want either of these, you can go onto my website, which is dannyconnorwild.com and you can have red squirrels for the year or Christmas. Okay, thanks dog. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. But anyway, these guys really want to go for their walk. You want to go walkies? So I'm going to say goodbye and pack up and we're going to go for a walk. You want to go for a walk? Okay, let's go for a walk. Come on then. Thanks for watching. <laughs>